And just like that, we now have custom screensavers working once again on our Amazon third generation Fire TV Cube. Now imagine you could use a single application that will allow you to fully control, fully manage your Android TV device or your Amazon Fire TV. And through this application, you can now install applications, you can transfer files, you can send ADB commands, you can take screenshots, you can record the screen, you can use a virtual remote control, you can use a virtual mouse, all of that and much more through this single application. Well, this application is not a dream, it actually exists today and it's available right now, both for your Android phones or your Apple iPhones. If I just open up my Android phone, here we can see exactly what the application looks like. Now, when you start the application for the first time, it will do a quick scan of all of the Android TVs or Fire TVs on your device, and it'll show them in a list here, as you can see. Now, you do have to ensure that you've enabled USB debugging on your device for your device to appear. Now, as we can see, I'm currently looking at my on 4K Pro in the background. Here we can see that at the bottom, so I can now click on that. Now, if you can't see your device in the list, you also have the option to click on more, and you can now enter in the IP of your device. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can also click on all, and this will now show you any device on your home network where it's detected that the port 5555 is open. But in my case, because I know my on 4K Pro is the last device here, I'm just gonna click on that now. And just like with all ADB connections, you do have to accept this on the device. So let me click on always allow, and click on allow again. And I'll then establish the partnership and we've now made the connection and we can now see all of the options here. So the first one we have in the list is install. I can click on that. And this basically means that this will now browse my phone and it will show me any applications it can find. Any application that you click on, it will then automatically push that directly to your device. So no need to mess about trying to find websites or use different application stores. You can literally find any application on your phone one click and push that directly to your streaming device. So let's quickly try that now. Let me just download an APK. Let's navigate to my website and let's click on downloads just for a quick test. And let's say, for example, I want to download um, remote ADB shell. Here we are, so let's click on that. Let's click on download now. That'll then download the application directly to my phone. Download anyway. That's now done. If I go back to ATV tools, there we can see remote ADB show. Let me click on that now. And this is now pushing the application directly to my device and it will then initiate an install. That looks like that's now finished. Let's now navigate to our device in the background and let's see if it's installed remote ADB show. Uh, let's go to applications, see all apps, scroll down, and there you have it guys, the so remote ADB show which has now correctly been installed directly onto my device. So super easy to use and a great way for you to install applications directly from your phone and push them onto your device. Let's go back. Then you got the option to upload to download. So what this basically means is, let's say for example, you're trying to play some emulators on your streaming device. How do you now get ROMs from your phone that you downloaded over to your device? Well, if I click on upload to download on the top right. So do you want to allow access? Let's click on allow. And again, it's gonna ask you, if I click on that again, which file do you want to send to the download folder? So again, let's say for example, I want to send um, this aerial views. Let's click on that now. And this will now upload that file. It says it's successfully uploaded. And if I now open up a file manager, and let's open up explore. Let's see if that file was transferred successfully. I can scroll down to download. Let's click on that. And there you have it guys. So that's the file that I pushed from my phone that's now available for me to install or use in an emulator or really wherever I want. But what a great and easy way for me to transfer files from my phone over to my streaming device. Let's go back. Then you've got your own file manager here, so I can click on that. This will allow, allow me to browse all of the file system of my streaming device directly from my phone. If I open up the download folder, we can see there's four files in there. Let's say I want to delete this um, app killer and click on that, click on delete. That's now deleted. So a very easy way for me to manage the files on my streaming device directly from my phone. You also have options to open on device. You can rename it, you can copy it, or you can move it to another folder. So all of this file management, file manipulation you're doing on your phone, but it's directly impacting your device. You can also clear the cache off your device with one click. So you can click on that. Now it'll initiate the cache clearing. Now you also have the ability to take a screenshot. So if I just go back to home, 
Let me now click on screenshot. This should now take a screenshot of the uh, Gladiator picture. We can see in the background and we can see it's done exactly that. Maybe if you're troubleshooting, you're trying to show the screen to somebody, you can very easily take a screenshot with that button there. You can then share it, you can download it or update it. Let's go back. You can also record the screen. So what a great way for you to troubleshoot or to share exactly what you're doing on your device with somebody else. So if I click on screen record, okay, so it's now recording the screen. So if I go down, 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 go across, let's say I open up uh, PP, SSPP. Give that a second. Okay, that's now opened. Let me now click on stop screen recording. And I should then, as you can see on the screen, make a video for me. You can click on play and I'll give you a preview or in most cases you want to download the video to your device and you can then share it. So if I click on download, that should then download that video file and it saves it onto your device. Let me see if I can open that up. Here it is, let me click on that. And we should be now looking at a video of what I was doing on my device. You can see I'll scroll to the right and then eventually I'll open up PPSSPP. And we can see the screen recording is working absolutely fine. That's working great. Let's back out of that. You can also delete that from your device. Let's click on delete. I'll then delete the copy that was stored on your streaming device. You've got the options to reboot there and you can also power off your device. Let's leave that as is. And you can see on the bottom right here, we have the ability to remote control. So if I click on that now, and we can now see I have a virtual mouse that you can see on the screen. So for example, if I go over to uh, settings and click on that, I can then modify the settings. So lots of people want to use a virtual mouse for certain applications, maybe applications designed for tablets or phones. They want to use them on an Android TV, but in most cases that requires some kind of touch control or some kind of virtual mouse. Well, with ATV tools, you can see that virtual mouse is built directly into the application. So super easy to use. I can just swipe over, uh, click on something. Let's click on this here just for a test. Click. It's just working absolutely fine. You can also go to D-pad mode. So I can now uh, press back, back again. I can now swipe down with my hand to scroll down, swipe right to scroll right. I now have full control of my device from my phone. Let's go back. Now, if I click on applications or apps, that'll then show me all of the applications running on my device. And I can now, for example, uninstall them. I can force stop them. So let's say, for example, I want to remove uh, Analyti, the speed test. Let's click on that. You can see I have the options to uninstall it. I can download the APK to my device. And this is actually a great feature because many times people ask that they've installed certain applications, third party applications, but they're not sure where they got the application from. And they now want to install the same application onto another device. How do they do that? Well, if I click on download, this will now download the APK for that application and put it onto my phone. Now I can then use ATV tools to push that from my phone onto another streaming device. So really a great handy feature. Now what I did notice on my device is when I click on download, it has actually seemed to be crashing the application in my device. So I will reach out to the developer and let them know that there seems to be a slight bug there, but that's how I'm sure the feature should work. And I'm sure with the quick update, we'll be able to get that working again. Now, for example, you can click on running apps. This is now show you all of the applications running on your device, the ones that are running in the background, and you can now very quickly force stop them. So Let's say I want to stop PPSSPP. I can click on the cross there, click on yes. Now then properly force stop the application, which again will free up valuable memory on your device or also valuable CPU cycles. It's a great way for you to quickly stop applications running in the background directly using ATV tools. You go to third party. This will show you the third party applications on your device. And again, you have the option to uninstall. You can download, you can force stop, you can clear the data. You can see the permissions. So for example, this one here, let's see what permissions it has. Here we are. And you can see exactly what permissions the application has on your device. Now the shell is a great feature. So many times people ask that they don't want to enter in ADB commands manually. Typing them out is an easy way to do it. I can click on shell. And there you can see there, I now have full shell access to my streaming device. Even your Amazon Fire TVs where they've disabled the local ADB you can use this because this is seen as a remote connection onto your device. So in fact, let's now jump over to my third generation Fire TV Cube. Let's actually use this in a real life scenario. Okay, let's now make a connection to my third generation Fire TV Cube. 
Let's see if I can find that in the list. There we are, we can see third gen TD. Let's click on that now. Just ensure that you've got ADB debugging enabled on your device. I can now click on always allow. I've now made a, a connection using ATV tools over to my Amazon Fire TV cube. So again, very similar, we can see the features. I can see a uh, file manager. I can take a screenshot. Let's click on that. Just show you that all of the tools working on your Android TV devices generally will work on your Amazon Fire TV devices as well. Let's go to applications. I can now see all of the applications installed on my Fire TV cube. That's working fine. Well, we can see on my device, I've already installed aerial views, which you can see here. Uh, let's see if I can actually open that up. If I click on that, that does open OK. And we can see I can actually preview that. So that works fine. I, I can see these amazing screensavers on my third generation Fire TV Cube. How can I actually set that as a screensaver? If I press back, I can now open up a web page which is from the creator of this screensaver. And you can see on his page, he actually has the step-by-step -step instructions on how you can use ADB to set your screensaver on your streaming device. So, so ADB command to set aerial views as your screensaver, I can click on that. It tells you how to connect, but there is the command there. So this long command, you can see, we can now use ATV tools to send that directly to our Amazon device. So let's click on copy. That's now copied. Let's go back to ATV tools. I can now go to show and where it says gazelle that's now an adb connection to my device i can now just paste the command here so let's paste that in that's now pasted let's run that okay that command has now gone in so that should have now set that as my default screensaver and i believe the default timeout is five minutes let's see if we can also change that timeout just for a test here we go so change the time so let's just change it to which is in milliseconds. Let's copy that command. Let's go back, paste that in. But let's just do for a quick test. Let's just say I'm changing the timeout to 10 seconds. So 10,000, there we are. Let's send that command. Let's see now in 10 seconds, do I now start a custom screensaver on my Amazon third generation by TV cube? So just like that we now have custom screensavers working once again on our amazon third generation fire tv cube it did take a little bit longer than i thought to start maybe it didn't like that custom timeout but just to prove that it will work you can once again use adb to set that custom screensaver on your device i can also bring up the remote control i can now once again use my finger to swipe around and control my device so really guys as you can see just a superb application many great features works great on both your android tvs and your amazon devices lots of ways to send files to manage applications to uninstall things to take screenshots send adb commands and much more all of that's built in directly into atv tools available both for your Android phones as well as your Apple iPhone. So really appreciate your support. Do like and share this video. Do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.